Everyone says walakura is hard, but is that true? Absolutely not, as long as you master one thing really well. And in this roadmap, I'm going to explain what this thing is, why it's so important, and what are the steps you can take to dramatically improve your watercolors and finally get to paint what you feel like. I'll use my own journey as well as this challenging ghost painting I just did to show you. The answer's there, watercolor, as in water and color. In relation to water, you need to master water control. And in relation to color, you need to master the water to paint ratio. They go hand in hand. Mastering the water to paint ratio is knowing how to create paint mixes of various consistencies and when to use which to get a certain effect, whether the paper is dry or wet. Mastering water control is knowing for how long to wet the paper for and spotting the different drying stages of it so you can keep adding the consistency of paints that are the best match for the effect you want to create at any given moment. It's also knowing when it's useful to stop painting because the paper is drying too much or when you should wet your paper again and in what ways to do it. And it's also knowing how to fix a mistake when you added too much paint or too much water. With experience, all of that comes easy and I find you can fix anything in a painting. And the best part is that mastering these two things will snowball into improving every other skill or technique that you need for watercolors and it all stems from one simple exercise. First, I suggest to ditch all the shiny objects that relate to watercolor and focus on painting backgrounds. The time that it takes you to improve from background painting depends on how often you practice. No miracle method here. What really moves the needle in the end is how you go about it. With everything, whether it is health, fitness, the basic and most inexpensive steps are always best, and improving watercolor skills is no different. Keep it simple. The problem is that we get distracted by plenty of things, and that abundance of choice makes it easy to get unfocused and to procrastinate. For a watercolor that might be scrolling online for inspiration on things that we know we'll never paint, or it could be this fancy paintbrush or expensive paints that we think might help us get better and want to practice more. I think you get the point. Just saying because of course I've been there. When I got started, I was hyper focused on learning about color mixing and trying all the paints, thinking that will make a difference. But I realized that nowadays, I can do anything with minimal supplies and just a few colors, which is proof supplies don't make the art. This is an example of a recent painting that I did with a very average set of paint and paper I was gifted by a brand, and even though it doesn't look as good as my other works, my water control and water to paint ratio skills helped to make it look okay. So you know that water and color are the things to master, that you can do it easily by practicing backgrounds, and that supplies aren't all that important, except for one thing, paper. I strongly recommend 100% cotton papers, cold press, and with a weight of 300 GSM. Paper plays a huge part with water control. Cheap papers will dry fast, buckle, colors won't diffuse and melt into each other easily, even if you have water control and water to paint ratios right. That's why ever since I experienced the huge difference between the cheap and more expensive papers, I don't mind investing into pricey brands anymore because I don't do well with the other types. I choose from 100% cotton papers by Arche, Winsor Newton, Senergy, Artis is okay. I haven't tried everything and I'm aware we all have different tastes, so you will need to experiment a bit but you would quickly see and feel the difference with just a few strokes. One thing that isn't near as obvious as paper but still can help is getting a paintbrush with natural fibers, just because they hold water so much better and they're not stiff, like most synthetic paintbrushes. Now they make synthetic paintbrushes that feel and act like natural hair fibers. It's the case with these, my favorites, but I know there are other brands you can choose from. You will avoid a streaky look on a background with good paintbrushes. Paints make the least difference, I think, except if you were to get a very cheap set from the dollar store. All of the ones you find at your art store should work, whether it's student or artist-grade paints. 
Great paints are generally best when you want to make sure colors won't fade easily over time because you sell, gift, or frame your paintings. For me, the easiest way to start background painting in a non-boring way was with simple landscapes. The kind with a one or two color wash of paint for a background with silhouettes. And you can actually see some of these on my channel as they were my first videos. That's when I discovered that with watercolor, fitting out a shape or an entire sheet with color isn't easy. It's a full workout. That's because to create anything with watercolor magic in it, transparency and colors blending into each other beautifully, you need to be good at both water control and at understanding the water to paint ratio. And I think that's why we always hear watercolor is hard. Because as soon as you started, you already have that roadblock of handling the paint and water no matter the subject you want to paint. The outcome of practicing simple landscapes will be confidence and more chances to nail a new painting on the first try. For example, with my ghost painting, even though the subject seemed challenging to me because of the strong contrast between background and subject and all the transparency, especially in the hand, I had the confidence I could do it. I didn't know in advance all the precise steps to get there, but I just knew I would manage because I had taken them all before in other paintings. What I mean is I could have started the painting in a different way and still get similar results. It's the feeling comfortable with paint and water that truly matters. With the ghost, I started with just the background and then the ghost, but I could have applied a light layer of paint everywhere to start because even if some of the background bled into the ghost, I know what to expect and how to fix it in various ways. And in this technical lemon painting, I decided to paint a base layer on the whole sheet, but I could have done the lemon and fabric separately too. You will acquire that kind of confidence as you get comfortable handling water and paint, and there's nothing more challenging than painting backgrounds to do that fast. Now that you're getting more comfortable with backgrounds, that you have tried several papers and found the one, that maybe you found a good paintbrush to go along with that, you can keep on leveling up. And I'd suggest to go for backgrounds with special effects like skies, galaxies, and northern lights. In all of them, you can start using a bunch of colors. Observe how they mix and flow on paper. Learn how to control that with your paintbrush. And you can also create special effects like clouds, a Milky Way, there are many options. Besides all the YouTube videos I've made, I'll link a Skillshare class in the description that's intended for that purpose of mastering water control and the water to paint ratio. I take you through the whole process in real time and with detailed explanations and examples every step of the way. In the class, I have students layer the paints twice after the initial wash of paint, so that would definitely be the best training and shortcut I can provide. When you've been through all four steps I mentioned, you would have noticed that in the process, other skills were built. Color mixing, but also ways to leverage paint strokes or getting to know another medium like white gouache. I'll show you with the ghost. When you're good at spotting the right paint consistency, it becomes easy to add texture to a painting. It could be splatters or using the dry brush technique. Building contrast in a painting with nice light and shadow work would also be something you practice with background painting. In the ghost, with all the works I've painted, starting with that one background exercise, I knew where and how to add shadows, how to apply colors with how much water, and how many layers I might need. Similarly, I've taught myself to use white gouache, first when I was adding stars to my galaxies and skies, and it has evolved into a better understanding of how I can use that to make more effective highlights or refining light edges on a tricky subject like this ghost standing against that dark background. We've covered a lot just now, and you might still want to learn a little more about paint consistency, paper, and how to approach a watercolor painting. That's why you can watch this video here for more about that. Thanks for watching and see you next time.